Now, our next guest is one of the most hated soap characters of all time. After walking onto the cobbles as a happy-go-lucky Jack the Lad, Jeff Metcalf soon showed his true colours as an evil, abusive, coercive controller to his wife, Yasmin. I bought you a lovely meal. I just wanted to treat you. Oh, it's fine, honestly. <laughs> he made me sick. You know what people say, oh, here she is, fat Yaz, thunder thighs. You actually thought I'd bought it for you? I bought it for someone who'd fill it in all the right places. Look at you, <gasps> cowering. Hello? I've just killed my husband. Stop tormenting me. I felt bullied and terrified in my own home. Why would I want to humiliate my own wife? Because that's what abusers do. Ian Bartholomew, who plays Jeff, joins us now. Thank you so much, Ian. Actually, really difficult to watch that, isn't it, when you see those little clips back to back? Um, it is it... actually a potted version of uh, a potted version of some of the history of Jeff and Yasmin. Yeah, it's actually quite a hard watch, I have to say. It's very difficult, and, and like we just said there as well, Ian. I mean, you, your character started off as this kind of very happy bloke, you know, everybody's sort of yeah. mate. You even at that point had no idea the dark turn it was going to take. Well, I, I was I was forewarned that there, there may be a bit of a turn as far as um, his ca uh, character was concerned, but um, I don't think any of us realised quite how how much of a three hundred and sixty de uh, degree turn that was going to be. No, it, it came as um, it came as a bit of a surprise and the, the area that we w were going into. But they wanted to use um, uh, the the couple of Yasmin and Jeff as a as a, an issue driven plotline about coercive control and having an older couple to actually um, to do that, to show that, you know, these people are often, perpetrators are often serial, serial abusers. It's not the first time, obviously, he's done this. So um, I think they've succeeded hugely in the way that they've um, managed to escalate the unpleasantness of the character through the relationship. So all power to the writers and producers as, as well, I think. As Christine said, I mean, you're probably I... one of the most hated people in the country at the moment. How <laughs> difficult is it for you living your normal life now, going to supermarkets, or do people really think you are that character? I don't go out. Don't you? I don't blame <laughs> you. <laughs> um, uh, to be honest with you, when it got really unpleasant and, uh, and all the really big stuff was happened during lockdown. So uh, I wasn't going out very much anyway. I live in the middle of nowhere. Um, uh, we have a lot of... Um, um, access to to the, the countryside to to, to to open spaces. So, to be honest with you, um, I've not seen that many people. I don't use public transport because I have to drive into work. So I'm in my car anyway. I know it's not very ecologically sound, but um, it keeps us safe from COVID. Because you know, if we can't film, uh, we're in all sorts of trouble. Do you know what I mean? If we get the disease, so we have to be very careful. Um, but. Those people I have come in contact with have mainly been very, very supportive. They understand that it's an important storyline. It's an important story to tell. And actually, a lot of people have given me the thumbs up. So it's been OK. I haven't been handbagged in the street yet. I haven't been attacked. So that's <laughs> all good. As, a, as an actor, when you're, when you're looking at a character, you, you, yeah. you usually have to find some point of connection don't you? Yeah. And I'm sure you've had to have to had to dig very deep to find any connection. What what was what's that been like? It, it's not been easy, I have to say. Um, I was thinking about it actually last night, knowing I was coming on the, on the program today. Um, over the last two years, the 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 story has been a very very slow burn, which in soap terms is very unusual. And I realised that playing Jeff has been very different through Jeff's eyes, seeing Yasmin crumble in front of him is very, very different to what for, to Ian as the actor watching Shelley, who's playing the character, crumble in front of him. And I think that's been mm. what's been, for me, most upsetting. We had a lot of, we did a lot of research with um, survivors and um, victims of domestic abuse. 
that were at, we, we had access to through Women's Aid, who were very, very involved in the storyline and the development of the storyline. And there's the stories that we heard are very upsetting. It's 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 a very it's a very difficult thing to listen to somebody's pain and distress uh, through coercive control and uh, domestic abuse. But actually watching it in front of me for the last two years, it's not just getting your mindset as the actor into Jeff, who enjoys what he's doing. Obviously, he's plainly a very cruel, unpleasant man. But as the actor myself, watching it has been, I have to say, quite difficult. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not surprised. I have to say I've had to flinch away from it often and actually turn it off because I had somebody very close to me that was in a, in a violent relationship. But what she always said was people focus on the bruises, on the physical, but it was the coercive bullying for the year before he hit me the first time that was yeah. worse. She said it was yeah. far, far worse. I think you both play that so beautifully. I just want to ask you quickly, I was in the soap years ago, EastEnders, and I was a bit of a nasty character. And um, I used to sometimes, just, just listening to you there, talking about how different it is for you as the actor and as the person watching, I used to sometimes, if I'm honest, a bit after we'd, we'd finished filming, I used to quite like that sort of power and that sort of, like that stomping about and people sort of parting the ways a bit for me to walk walk through the corridors just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I started to enjoy it. Is there, is there any part of it that's kind of seeped in a bit that you've had to pull back? Control is a very, is a very, is a very, um, what's it, what's the word? It's a, it, it creeps up on you, doesn't seductive. it? The power of controlling somebody else. Seductive, it's, it's yeah. Very, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very seductive, but I think Shelley and I have always kept our, each other honest. Um, we, we get on terribly well. And I think uh, we've managed to circumvent any sort of um, any sort of problems in our in our in our, in our personal lives um, by just going right. This is the story. We have to tell this story. It's a huge responsibility for us, and we have to focus on on that. And you know, at the end of the working day, she and I can walk away from it. I can walk away from being the abu the, the abuser. She can walk away from being the abused. But of course, there are so many people out there who are living with it day in, day out, for real. And it all happens behind closed doors. That's the alarming, worrying thing about this this um, epidemic, way if, if you want to call it that. Um, that it's so hidden and it's. People don't like to intrude on people's private lives, but of course, I think that's what we have to do if we realize that somewhere somewhere near where we live and as we walk down our, our street, we can be passing doors where this is happening and you can't see it. It's quiet. It's, 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 it's always in the dark, as it were, and I yeah. think we need to bring it out into the light. And I think this storyline has been very influential in, in it, causing that in, in some respects. It certainly has, Ian. And I know you put your time to good use in lockdown. You've, you've written a single. Um, it's called This Time. It's yeah, I, I was very, very distressed. It's not just what I did during lockdown. It's, it's what I did because of lockdown, actually. Um, women, people all over the country have been locked indoors with their abusers and not being able to go out. And I was so alarmed and distressed and angry about the upsurge in, in cases of uh, uh, reported cases of domestic abuse, and women were dying, uh, uh, you know, every day, and it was reported on the television. I just thought to myself, I have to do something about this. I have to do something. If I can use the profile that Coronation Street has given me, um, then I, I should do it. And I'd already done a video for Women's Aid um, explaining what to do if you if you think you're in an abusive relationship, then please call 999 and, and, and you, giving them a, a, a list of things to go through to um, to report their um, situation. Uh, and it got a massive reaction, which was very surprising to me. And I just thought, well, I have to do something else. And the song came to me very, very quickly. I've written songs and played in bands and played music for years. And it just sort of happened. happened. I, I toddled off down to my shed with a bottle of something um, <laughs> delicious every so often and recorded it well, and, and it, sent it to a, a record producer and he picked it up and uh, uh, you can hear what he's done with it. It's, yeah. it's 
Well, very, Ian, like you say, of course, happy. it's very powerful this time. It's forever. It's released today. Thank you so much, Ian, for talking to us. Thank like you, you say, it's a, it's a tough, you. it's a tough storyline, I'm guessing, from your perspective, but so, so worth it. Um, thank you so yeah. much. I know there'll be a big thank climax you. coming up to Christmas as well. So we will all be watching, no doubt. And indeed, if you're sitting at home now and you've been affected by anything that we've just been talking about, you can head over to our website where you'll find some information on our helplines.